Welcome to We Are Libertarians. My name is Dale Melch and with me is Hody Johns. And today we're going to be talking about family dynamics and the relationships there too. I think that sounded right. So Hody, how are you doing today? Anytime you try to use the Shakespearean word, I just assume it's going to get messed up. There of, there be, there by. But <laughs> yes, family, yeah, family relationships. And you and I have both taken, uh, I want to say non-traditional, but that, that does sound weird, doesn't it? It makes us sound like an alternative. I won't say the other word that I wanted to use because right. <laughs> you and I have she, you, you know and I, she's listening. You and I have a unique family story and family situation, there we go. and uh, it's given us some unique perspectives. But I also like I also want to address the the classic traditional structure during this as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think because we're in libertarian circles, it's so easy to just focus on non-traditional families because we so, we're so supportive of their rights and since you and i kind of have the uh i, I like the fiddler on the roof example uh do you know fiddler on the roof no. I, I know of it but i don't know what you're referencing in that in those uh in that story but in, in this in the song tradition 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 yeah they're talking about what the, the role of the mom and the pop the mamas, and the, and the, the, the mamas. mamas. Okay, yeah, you know it well enough. Tradition. So yeah, uh, like there is for me, there is nothing wrong with that structure, and there's a reason. I think when you see a pattern, there's a reason patterns emerge, and it's not necessarily for unhealthy things. Now, yes, we are used to the state setting up unhealthy patterns and forcing us to live those patterns, and so very bad things become the norm. Family is not one of those things. Families no. have been around as a pattern with or without government coercion for a very long time. Whether you're a religious person or not, there is always a natural by nature. Um, I mean, even if you think we're no different than other animals, animals have family dynamics. Now, some of them aren't so great. Some of them are like, uh, you either f I'm a push pushing out of the, the nest, and so you're either going to fly or you're going to die. Uh, there's a lot of the, what the praying mantis, like cut the head off the spouse type thing. Uh, <laughs> but did, by and large, did you see that meme, did you see that meme the other day? I did. Where I had the grasshopper in the bed with the <laughs> dude with his head and a puddle of blood. It said, I bet he's thinking about other dudes. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it, it's a great take on a, on a meme there. But um, but I, I think there's a good reason that that family dynamic exists and tends to exist in the wild. You have that. Uh, that male, the male that goes out, that does the killing, that brings the kill back to the lion, the lionesses, his harem, as well as the other children and weaker, uh, weaker lions. You know, it's not always just a single lion. Sometimes there are multiples in wolf packs. There tend to be um, even the guy who did, coined the term alpha wolf kind of retracted it a little bit and said, well, there's more than one. They hunt in packs, and so there are more than one that are able to breed. It's not all like lion prides where there's only one breeder right now. You know, uh, there are only, you know, some that are worthy of not, you know, but by and large, the general goal is to get as many as possible, right. you know, hunting and, and all that. So really just some type of strong person bringing back that to help the others get stronger themselves and do their jobs effectively as well. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to give you this, I think because, I mean, Dale, you and I have had such unique experiences, we're not going to tell you that it must be this way, but there's nothing wrong with that. And I think there's a lot of guilt sometimes that comes with just being, I'm a, you know, I believe the guy should work and the, the girl should stay home. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the family that you prefer, it's your choice. As long as you don't force other people into that choice, it's a perfectly logical choice to make. And you have a lot of natural backing for that. Right. Well, what I was going to what I was going to point out is the reason why that guy retracted that thing about alpha wolves is because it turns out that scientist is a beta male. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and on that side of the house, um, this podcast has officially gone off the rails, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> that, and, that's a hilarious. That's that's funny, though. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, he's like, oh, boy, all of a sudden I can't get a date all of a sudden. I need to change my science. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So you were you're fixing to say something else before I uh, so rudely dropped that joke in. No, not at all. I, I actually wanted to turn it over to you and your thoughts on like the tradition. Let's call it the traditional nuclear, traditional, the nuclear here, here, family. Here's yeah. What I got here's what I got traditional family versus the family you choose. Yeah. Because that's part of my story, which I can I can get into and be uncharacteristically uh, unmasked unmasked and raw here. But I'll I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I think the the normal, the, the husband, wife, you know, that, that whole traditional structure is, 
is the norm, whether you're, you're that, that transcends time, whether you believe in evolution or you believe the, the chronicling of the Bible, that sort of thing. And that's that's the matrix where in which society is built. And that's where the children get their code written. And basically all of that, every single one of those family units in aggregate, both the long ways and across time, that's how our and that's how our society ends up developing. I'm I'm imagining right now all these equations going around everybody's heads thinking about that. But that's the 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 direction of the family. So goes the culture. Or so goes the uh, the the nation wherein that that family is situated. If that makes any sense. And there's a lot of value to keeping that together. And um, there's a lot of of good that's done when you can get into a good family situation or be born into a good family situation. There's a lot of wrong that happens. And that oftentimes can lay the groundwork for turning yourself into a personal project or basically setting yourself up for the opportunity for, for you and your children and your children's children to stand on the shoulders of the giants that went before you. And there's also, it, it gets, it touches on nature versus nurture. It's so dynamic. We're going to have to have more than a half an hour for this uh, is what I'm going to say at this point. We can do that. multiple episodes if it really becomes too long, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> No, that was it. I was I was gonna I was gonna lead I was gonna let you lead off with um with your with your story before I I got into mine because I'm still kind of organizing my my thought. train of thought. Sure. Yep. The you know I I think there's such a you can overthink this quite a bit. I think because uh, Thoreau is a good example that I use. He couldn't have a family because he was like, well, if I have kids, how do I not coerce the kids into thinking like I do, but still pass along like valuable information, and it's. It, there are imperfections that get passed along. I think even uh, Fiddler on the Roof is a great example because you look at these traditions that do help keep them together, but some of them aren't great. You know, uh, he is unable to reconcile even speaking to his last daughter uh, because she marries, well, she she marries a, a communist swine. But uh, <laughs> uh, so that, I mean, that should be a good enough reason, right? But, you know, she marries uh, a non a non-Jew right? Somebody's outside the relationship. And that's obviously bad. And, and he eventually his heart melts at the end. He's like, hey, make sure she knows how to write to us, how to find us. Um, he doesn't say it to her directly because tradition won't allow him to do that. But at the same time, there's it's basically these other traditions. Uh, the first daughter chooses a, 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 a match for herself as opposed to letting the matchmaker do it. Um the next uh, daughter, oh man, I forget, but yeah, they, they all basically do something kind of non-traditional, all three of his daughters. Um, and it's, it's not bad. And it, he, it's the story about him coming, Tevya coming to grips with this changing world and where his traditionals are in this changing world. Now at the same time, Fiddler on the Roof is not talking, it's not bad mouthing traditions. You have a whole song about it. While some of them are kind of goofy and some of them are a little outdated and it's important that those change. It's also important rec to recognize systems that help keep you safe and help keep you stable. Um, they are going through a huge upheaval in Anatevka. Uh, they eventually get evicted at the end of the movie. They had barely just finished getting evicted at the beginning, you know, of the musical. And it's a, uh, it's a tough it's a tough generational thing to be going through and to have some type of stabilizing elements even if it's just like family dinner yes there's nothing inherently that says if you're not eating dinner together as a family that you're a bad family but it's a great it's something great to live up to to say at least hey recognize to say hey if we're not going to do family dinner together maybe breakfast or maybe just create some kind of time to talk together. I think that you can overthink it by just saying that I am so worried about passing on any of my biases to my kids. Um, Jamie and I are people of faith and we have, uh, it's, it's her kid, but essentially mine because we're in a relationship together and I, I do some co-parenting, but we let them choose their own faiths. And one of them has decided to believe in God and the other has opted not to. And we're going to just let it go and let it flesh itself out because we really feel that we, of course, will provide our opinions on it, but we're not going to force it onto somebody else. And I think that that's kind of the hybrid flow that you need to have with the family to say that I'm going to teach these kids things that I think are important, but I'm also going to teach them things that are important to me and allow them to decide if it's important to them. Right. And and I really think that you can go down a twisted psychological philosophical path with it 
but we understand that, look, we're all imperfections. Genetically, your imperfections are getting passed off to your kids. You don't have a problem with that when you procreate. So yeah, you might have some ideas that aren't fully there yet or try something new or, or say that, you know, I'm not going to be a perfect parent. Or maybe you have a bad tradition like Tevya has that needs to get manipulated a little bit. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I would say there's there's millions of imperfections that get passed along. I think uh, you, we bring up the Bible, and, and again, you don't have to be a Bible believer to believe this history. Do you? No, no you don't, because <laughs> there are there are documented histories about the tribes of Israel, whether you're you believe it or not. But they talk about how if you do this, God says, "Well, now your children are cursed." Not because God curses them. Because you cursed him. You know, if you decide to live this life, that will impact your family. And that does get passed forward. So I guess I'm not saying no sweat, like procreate and don't worry about it. But I am saying don't overthink it. You know, you want to be a blessing to your, 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 your posterity will be blessed because of your choices, no matter what you do. And that's okay to say, yeah, I'm, ha I'm, I'm passing along these blessings and these curses based on my perf on things that I'm good at and things that I'm bad at, but that's just family, right? Right. Well, getting to the getting to the blessings and curses, um, one of the things that you know the thing that you have to consider is you know what the reticence that Erica and part of the reticence that Erica and I have had. We we don't have children yet. Um, we may we may at some point. Um, that's been a choice mainly because we want to be responsible people and not afflict ourselves to the, uh, the welfare state for one thing. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is, you know, some of that overthinking, but one of the things that, that folks I think would allay some folks' fears about it is thinking about it in terms of what, what are your intentions when you're interacting with your children? Are you, when you're engaging in discipline, are you engaging in the discipline to help them be better or is it just because they did something that aggravated you and you're just taking it out on them as opposed to acting like an adult and communicating um one of the stances that i've taken again as a non-parent but if this ever becomes a thing for us is we're gonna utilize peaceful parenting um very we'll hopefully have very few instances of yelling because that was a dynamic and both mine and, and Erica's home of origin. Um, and, you know, no corporal punishment. I mean, let the, I mean, let the, let the punishment fit the crime. If you're trying to impress something upon a child, there's no problem with exhorting them. Like, Hey, I've told you five times not to play marbles and jacks in the trap in traffic. Get over here. You know, th that's one thing, you know, if you're, if you're exhorting them, it's, it's a different, you know, you want to relay the point to them that this is for your safety. But even then, I don't think an exhortion, if that's the exhortation there, that's the word. It sounded too much like an extortion, mm -hmm. but uh, exhortation isn't, isn't wrong. Um, it's when it, be, it's when it comes to the point of where are you, be, are you being an, in, are you treating the, the misbehavior like an inconvenience versus Hey, this is a character issue that we need to address. And go ahead. Right. Gonna... No, I, I, I think what you say is fantastic. I, I my parents were uh, um, did practice corporal punishment. I don't hold it against them because I don't think they knew everything that we know now. Um, my family has kind of gone on my liberty journey with me, and so we're there. You know, I don't, I don't want to badmouth people that do necessarily hold on to corporal punishment. Although I do agree with you, I think that. I think that studies are starting to come out that show that peaceful parenting and non-corporal punishment is is more effective. Um, I think because it's lasting. I think people look at the immediate thing and say, yeah, that kid won't do it again because, you know, that punishment hurt. But that won't, that's, a, that's only as effective as long as you're stronger than them. And that's right. kind of the lesson that you teach them. And it doesn't really prepare them for the longevity of growing up, you know, to, that, that won't that punishment won't be there always. And they know it won't be there always, you know? Kids are going to get away with one thing and say, well, then I can do it so long as I don't get caught, you know? As so long as, you know, and, and I think kids all at some point, eventually you can't hit them in a way that will hurt them enough that will stop them, you know? And, and they know it's only a matter of time and toughness to be like, you know what, actually, 
I think I'm strong enough now. I'm going to take the cookie. No, I'm going to get punished. And no, they really can't hit me hard enough in a way that's going to matter. Bad lessons, right? Bad lessons. So we want to get over to the good lesson side. And really that comes with, you know, if they're going to touch a hot stove to pull them away, you know, or, or smack their hand away if you have to, but say, explain why that had to happen. And I think that the explanation is something that will, that transcends time. That is something that will say, oh, okay, because that's a truth that you teach them. Instead of teaching them a momentary punishment, you teach them a universal truth. A hot stove will hurt your hand, you know, yep. and and and, uh, and that. And so, like you said, with the yelling, there's some times to be like, hey, back up, you know, like you need to get it there. You know, you're about to get hit by a car. I need to yell at you right now. But when they're out of the street, when the danger is passed to show that you are not just a bundle of emotions about them and, and, and create a whole bunch of fear. There shouldn't be fear about the street. There should be fear about utilizing the street. You know, if I, you utilize it incorrectly, if you are driving on the street, that's fine. If you look both ways before you cross the street, that's fine. Heck, if you're on a, I mean, I know I did this when I loved to play roller hockey when I was a kid, you kind of, you get people watching both ends of a long street People say, oh, hey, car, there's a car coming. Everybody backs off the street. There's a safe way to do it, you know, and yep. to, to establish that that's the better way to do it. I just, those are brilliant points. I, I guess I only wanted to reaffirm them because I, I totally agree with you on both. Mm-hmm. The other side of the house, one thing I will push back on is the, with the temporary punishment, in terms, especially in terms of the yelling. One of the things that, and I didn't realize this until I was in my, until I was in my, my twenties and didn't really defeat it until within the last year or so is the fact that you're always as a, as a parent, your voice is always going to be in your child's mind. And if you, and it's going to go with them when they make a mistake on their own, even if, even if there's no external stimuli, if you, if there's, even if there's an external stimuli coaching them about that mistake in the future, whether it's a boss or a coworker or whatever, that's still going to rebound through their psyche uh, throughout time. One of the things that I always, and I didn't, I'm sorry, this is, this is getting, getting to a, a little bit of a, a sensitive side of it for me, but I'll, I'll, I will continue. What, whatever I would either knowing, knowing I made a mistake without having been told, or even when I was told, I would always have my, my biological father's voice echoing back at me telling me you know what how useless i was Mm -hmm. um quote unquote useless i'm obviously not but that's that's one of the impacts that you can have as a parent why it's why i've always emphasized to folks it's 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 extremely important to as the person get a handle on that and defeat it so that way you're not plugged up emotionally and, and kept from being successful but at the same time, it's important for the parent to avoid that so they're not affecting their own legacy and their children. It's not just the legacy. Um, one of the referencing Game of Thrones, um, Tywin Lannister was a man who, who said he always valued legacy, always valued the family. But he was a selfish ass, uh, to put it mildly. And it led to all sorts of problems in the Lannister family, if you ever watched that show. Spoiler alert! <laughs> but... Um, Tying that back in, yes, he was a very effective politician, but a horrible family man. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things you want to avoid. Now, on the other side of the house, um, I did end up right around the time I was 13, getting involved with another with another family from my church. Um, And I now um, both of my my biological parents have passed on um, due to health 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 issues that that happened years ago. But um, I've chosen the family that um that kind of raised me part-time while i was growing up going to church and whatnot and you know there's i'm trying to i'm trying to (laughs) unscramble it enough and 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 get to the point here but uh, well let me let me put you on pause actually real quick because because you brought up something and i want to i do want us to share both our stories um You know, I I think that's just healthy uh, for for people to kind of know where we came from. But I you talked about how you being told that you're useless. This is so there's a whole series of things. And I was reading this in a in a parenting book, you know, when when you're catch all. I was gonna say that's a catch all. There are other things that he would say, but right. But that but that's but that's a great example. Things that you tell your kids out of anger that you really don't mean that have a huge impact. Right. Like. 
obviously your father does didn't know that you were actually useless, right? Mm. You could actually do things uh, and do them well. You maybe you were being making a mistake or whatever it was. Right. I, I think another classic is what's wrong with you. You should never say that. Uh, they what's wrong with that? You'll just constantly be wondering about what's wrong with you. You know, there, there's something broken inside of you as opposed to you just being a normal person. You know, it, it, that actually leads to like psychological like problems, uh, yes. like pe- people thinking, uh, thinking they got issues. Uh, the Edgar Allan Poe, uh, he had a lot of issues. One of and a lot of them stemmed for his his parents died of tuberculosis when he was very young, um, and a lot of and a lot of his issues he had some genius as well but a lot of his problems came about because they would tell him things um that messed him up in the long term and they're they seem normal a lot of people say what's wrong with you when your kid their kids acting up but that's something that we do without thinking about what that actually means to the child right right we just we say it because it's a normal thing to talk about to say when your kid's acting up so as opposed to saying that hey that's not acceptable you can't do that do not pick pick on your sister. That's wrong, you know. Instead, with and in fact, I'm even I'm even kind of against saying can't because you and I in the in the past have talked about the problem with saying no to everything that they do, even if they're doing a bad thing to to more explain why it's a bad thing. But the what's wrong with you is very bad. I know with that Edgar Poe uh, with his parents when his parents died, they said, "Oh, you know, they're on a they're on a trip far away. They're they're on a journey. You know, they they've passed on." And he was constantly like, "Well, when are they coming back?" You know, <laughs> like they would tell him things that kind of messed him up. And so that's really something to think about what you're passing on when you say to your say to a child like that. Now, I will let you, I guess, talk about your personal family dynamic, and uh, I will share mine as well. Sure. So with with on the on my biological parent side, um, I'll just leave it as it was a chaotic morass of, yeah, they did the best that they could. They were both, you know, one was one of them was evil, not Tywin Lannister evil, unfortunately, because we didn't have gold mines like he did. Um, the other one was a neurotic was a bit of a neurotic mess. Um, I got along better with my mom than I did with my with my dad with biological mom better than I got along with my biological father, but that was, that was the legacy. And some of the things that I've noticed just to bear out and illustrate the, the legacy thing is, you know, even though I've done my, what I feel done my best to avoid traits, things, dynamic scripts, we'll call them scripts um, that Tom may have passed on to me. Um, it's, stuff still comes up, even when I'm just, meditating or i'm like oh man that was a that was a thomism right there or wait why am i getting so anxious okay that's 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 my my mom's side getting out but i don't necessarily want to talk about that to an extent it's just it's something that that can hold a person back and it's something to be vigilant about whether you're thinking about being a parent or you are a parent so you can course correct um the family that i chose the, the stanfords i will i will talk about them and wax philosophical about them because they are wonderful folks um they can in my mind do no wrong um they they helped me foster my christian faith they um they gave me a second home a a caring home and accepting home and they they did i mean they disciplined me there was one time i was i was being such an ass at, at a pool that um mom uh the person that i call mom now did end up slapping me for being rude to somebody and i deserved it (laughs) <laughs> it was more taking it back because she was always so sweet and gentle and um but it was it was well earned i don't think she was abusing me at that point it was just i had i had earned that um but that was the only time that i can remember and the you know they were they were they were so good and orderly in their home like the worst thing that um the man that i call dad now uh did he he yelled at my sister for changing the settings on the computer i'm like wait, what? You're getting mad over that? Have you been to my house? <laughs> but talked about that later on. But it was just so much love, order. I was given, as a, as a result of joining this family, um, a brother and a sister that you know I, I wouldn't have had. Um, my, my actual brother, John, is, um, you know, he's a, he's a parateacher. He, he's very handy. He's, he's a musician. He's a great guy. Um, and my other sister, Jewel, um, we have our set of theological disagreements. I'll leave it at that. But she is also, she happens to catch this. I will say that she is a 
a wonderful, uh, godly woman, uh, a very strong leader, and uh, has several wonderful children of her own. And I, you know, things may not be where I want them now, but they've they've definitely changed the changed the trajectory of my life. And that that's what I'll say about the family that I, that I chose because you if you don't if you don't have family at least one that you choose it the world gets dark man i mean i yeah, yeah i'll leave that i'll leave it at that at this point yeah. well and there's such a strength to having the family that that transcends a great deal like you said you might have theological differences with one of them or political differences with one of them but there's something that comes with it with being like hey we come from the same place we understand each other's backgrounds we have took on this at many times, being a family is a responsibility, right? Even if you're the the son or the daughter or in a family, you have responsibilities. You know, there are there are things that are expected of you. There are demands to make. Let's not make this all a gigantic chore, right? right. There is so many advantages to being in a family. Now, if you're from a bad family, you probably don't see them. You know, <laughs> like you you probably see a lot of negative things that happen. Uh, but this is the advantage. This is the strength of a strong family is that you say, yeah, you guys invested, everybody invests a lot into their family. Let's get something out of it. You can get so much more out of what you put into a family than what you put into it. It's, it's, I, I think the reason it is a natural structure, it transcends biology at this point. It's a matter of incentive. There is a... There is a physical reason that you benefit by being in this structure, by being, by having these relationships. It is a natural investment. I, what I'll say, a return on investment. You might have friends, relationships, um, everybody outside of your family that will let you down, that you'll pour a lot into and say, I worked so hard and I didn't get that out of this. Jobs, especially, oh my goodness, that you pour lifetimes of effort into, multiple lifetimes of effort into in, in, in a single decade and not get anywhere. And you just say, that was a poor investment. That was a poor investment. Your family, always a good investment. And if you got to rechoose it, reshape it, then do it. You know, find it, find that family that will give you that natural good investment because it is it is so it is so powerful um and yeah and so my 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 parents are divorced they didn't divorce until i was i was a little bit later my mom and my dad were married 20 years actually um, wow yeah bef before everything fell apart and fell apart for them and for various reasons the uh, the easy the easy one would be that you know my my dad had some fidelity issues um and that's why that's why it ended up falling apart but I think it's so easy to blame it on that. That's why my marriage fell apart. But at the same time, there was a lot of other things going on. There was a lot that I didn't understand about women in general. And so my mom is a better person having gone through all of that, which is, it, it's a tough thing for her to admit because it's not her fault. You know, uh, like, you know, when, when you, when, at the end of the day, if you have to put one person at blame, yeah, that's what happened. But ultimately, even she has said, oh, man, there's so many things I learned about relationships now. There's so many things that I could have that I could have changed. You know, obviously, my dad has the bulk of the changing that he had to do. And my dad, to his credit, has done that as well. You know, got ripped apart, felt awful about what he did, had to fight so hard to have a relationship with us afterwards. And he did it you know, after totally falling off the map and really going through a dark place. And he had the, he had the longer recovery journey journey than my mom, frankly. Right. Um, and then, and then I had, I, again, I've referenced my first marriage, which didn't work out. I never had kids with her because I knew we were always in kind of a, we were in a good, I was happy, but I knew it wasn't a healthy place for like kids to get brought up in. So I, I knew not to, I knew to hold off. And right. I'm, I, I guess I'm glad I did. I loved her with all my heart. I had not the faintest idea what I was doing in a relationship. And so, yeah, did she have some fidelity issues? Yeah, she had some drug issues. She had some, she had issues, issues. She wow. had issues that created other issues there. But I did, I was not, I did not know everything that I could have done. I was not an effective communicator with her to tell her, I was a very verbal communicator and I thought everybody should be have everybody should have my love language, damn it. You know? And so if I say I love you, 
you accept it. And that's the end of the story, you know? And so for me, I was like, how could she not know I loved her? I, I told her that every day. Um, right. I fought the divorce hard. I actually ended up getting subpoenaed. Um, to ch they tried to strong arm me into sign signing the divorce decree. Um, and so in court, uh, it is documented that she's like, yeah, he never lied to me. He never raised his fist to me. He did all these things. And for me, I was like, yeah, so that means I'm awesome, right? There's a lot more to relationships than just not lying to somebody, not swearing at them and not hitting them. You know, right. I was, I kind of built my whole repertoire on being uh, oatmeal. <laughs> I'm good for you, but not very exciting. And she wanted something exciting. Ultimately, Jordan would have rather been with somebody who, I, I hate to say it, but was abusive or a liar or something. Just if they showed some, if they showed some type of, Obviously, it's not what she wanted, but she would have rather had that and been in a relationship with somebody who is passionate and uh, spontaneous and outgoing. And I was none of those things, you know, and, and I didn't see any of the signs and I accept my accountability for my end. Now, obviously, if you look back on it and say whose fault was it? Yeah, I'm not really accepting a lot of that blame, but I, it, I think it's I don't really care about blame at this point. I could have done better. She could have done better. Maybe she could have done the more better, but she had the harder recovery journal <laughs> journey afterwards. So, you know, and, and so ultimately now I'm in a relationship. I just proposed. I think this is my first time even saying this on air. Thank you. I'm engaged. I was going to, you know what? And I was going to, I'm going to stop you. I was going to just rat you out at the beginning, but I'm like, <laughs> eh, I'll let him, I'll let him rat himself out and I'll congratulate him for it. So congratulations. Thank man. you, man. I appreciate that. I had some massive trust issues. Uh, Jamie and I have been together for seven years now. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm a bit overdue. And really, honestly, me pretty much waiting out those seven years to be like, when's the relationship going to fall apart? When's it going to screw up? Like waiting, basically looking for excuses for it not to work out because of my experience with my last relationship and realizing that it's not going to. She is every bit of the person I want to be around. We do things together that married couples are like, holy cow, I'd kill my spouse if we had to do that together, you know? And we we are very, um, we work together. We we do our chores together. We are, a, we are as tight a couple as you can possibly imagine. And uh, it's, it, frankly, it's just time at this point. Uh, she's got her two kids. Again, that's, that kind of fits with the non-traditional thing. She's already got a couple of kids that I'm, and they, and they love their dad you know, who, who is their dad. And I'm not, I'm not going to step in on that. And he is, uh, <laughs> he, he is, he is great at certain things that I'm not great at. And he is the adventurous guy and I am the stable guy. Now that being said, I am still, I still love to do stuff with him. We go out and we, we you know, I think because of my last relationship, I learned that I can't just stay at home and be a good person, you know? So we go right. out and we do things, we have experiences and that, but he's good at like, he'll spend his last cent, even his rent money, taking them to like Disneyland. <laughs> and, and I'm like, man, that's such a bad idea, but like, that's such a cool experience for them. So I'm glad he's in their life. I'm glad I'm in their life too. And we have that relationship and that's just our family now, you know? And, and, and here's the thing, Dale, I think having shared both our personal stories, I, I want to, I want to, I, maybe we'll end here, but I just definitely at least want to talk about the reasons we should include people instead of exclude people from being part of that family. I think it's so easy to be like, well, did you sign this document? Well, is there, is this your biological this? Well, is this technically your that? Is this, uh, I mean, my, my fiance now, it sounds so fancy. Her, her dad is, is adoptive. Uh, that's her adoptive father and mm -hmm. I don't care he is a great parent to her so we could why why even bother to get hung up on being like well it's not your real dad well it's not your real this what's that well then what's real to you what is genetics just more real than love to you is, is that more important to you than what what's on your family tree and your genealogy you know, is it more important that they are my kids or aren't my kids or whether they call me dad or whether they call me Hody or whether they call who cares? Like, honestly, 
wouldn't you rather instead of making all these lines to say you have to color in in within these lines in order to be family these are the lines and you're only allowed to be within this wouldn't you rather extend that i already talked about the natural incentive to be in a family and how it's by nature man if you're stronger as a pack the wolf pack will take you on regardless of wherever you came from you know and and that's really how i feel i feel like this is a pack that when when we talk about these family dynamics man take on that new that new lone wolf you know that that ta- you know take it on let them improve your family if they're beneficial to you and go ahead and call them part of your family yeah maybe you don't want to call them mom dad son daughter whatever you flesh that out but absolutely allow family to be fluid enough with that definition that that is That person is important to you and you got their back whether they make a mistake or whether they're doing everything right, that you will be there to encourage them when they do great things and help them up when they mess up. You know, we are, I have a, our audience is huge, but ultimately if I say, if I, huge, the audience is huge. I, if I say something that's a mistake, I have 800 people that will jump all over me and fill up my inbox with hate. Okay. And I'm not saying that what I said was perfect. I talk too much to be perfect. I'm sorry. I just say too much. You know, what family needs to be is that place that's like, hey, man, I know you're going to be going through some rough times right now. I heard what you said last night. Yeah, maybe they can also be the corrective element as well, but they're also there to love you through it as opposed to throw you under the bus afterwards. You know, and, and, why not get more of those people if you can? Why not say, yes, this is somebody, I have their back. You mentioned it, theological differences, political differences, uh, differences of opinion, you know, uh, whatever the whatever it may be, wouldn't you still rather have a human being out there that wants the best for you as opposed to somebody with incentive to tear you down for a couple of likes on social media? Like, and so for me, I just, I think, and I guess I'll let this be my final thoughts, but just, just embrace it. If you have somebody that you're on the border of calling them family or not, welcome them in, make them your family, make them feel that way. Because we have way too many people, there are already enough lines in this world that says this can't hang out with this. You can't be with this. You can't be with that. And you can't do these things. I don't want to associate with this. I'm going to disassociate with that. Let's ha- let's 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 celebrate a few lines where you can voluntarily associate with somebody, and you both get something out of it. You know, there are times when you have to maybe disassociate. I know drug problems when you start stealing from your family. They say, "Hey, I love you, man, but you can't be here anymore." I get that. I get it. But those are rare and extenuating circumstances. By and large, let's get big families let's have as many people in these to call to call family as we can and i guess that's my final words um powerful words hody johns very powerful and i echo them um i'm gonna take a line from the ill uh i don't even know what to call game of thrones right now but there was a a really powerful line from um i think it was either the end of uh season seven or the start of season eight When the snows fall and the white winds blow, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. And that I want to speak to the folks that are inclined to be loners um, because I I echo your words completely. But I'm going to take that that side of the house here. Um, If you're tempted to be a lone wolf, but you've got folks around you that are that are willing to bring you in, by all means. I mean, as long as you're as long as you're pulling your weight and they want you around. I mean, don't want to make this a coercive thing, but by all means embrace that embrace that second family and then and then try to do all that you can to make it better and use the the good dynamics that you see to undo the undo the negative scripts um that that are in your mind that that will affect you and your posterity whether you would whether you wind up adopting or you have kids of your own i mean that's you know, another thing that, that Tywin, Tywin actually did say um, another thing that was actually good. The, the family that puts family first will always uh, defeat the house that puts family first will always defeat the house that that goes by the whims and wishes of its children. Now, I know there's a lot of open. We're tying a lot of Game of Thrones in here, but <laughs> um, and, and I just is reflecting. I know that there's there is some work that I need to do on that front, but 
you know, do your best. Um, I'll be obviously use your brain when you do it. You want to be rational. You don't want to just do what the, you know, whoever the leader of your family is, what they say unquestioningly. But there's a lot of wisdom that comes from the uh, the older generation. Don't tell dear leader I said that. But uh, <laughs> but there is a lot of wisdom from from those who've gone before us. And you know, be willing to enter in and take the dynamics that they've that they've laid out as a as a uh, as a toolbox to help you undo your own own problems. Those are those are my final thoughts, Odie. We can wrap it up here. Yeah. They say uh, they say the older I get, the smarter my dad becomes, and uh, <laughs> that is, I have found that to be true so much of the time. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm proud of t- teaching my family liberty, mm-hmm. but at the same time, my mom oh, gets a lot of credit for e- even though I w- might have been like the first kind of libertarian trailblazer in the family, she was the one when I was getting taught about how the department of education is just amazing and how we need to keep funding them. She was the first one to be like, you should look at how they spend that money. Sometimes it's not always great. And no. then, and then I did. And it was just like, <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> it, it's bad. But uh, yeah, there you go. I managed to make it political after all. <laughs> Damn it. Tony. <laughs> I was going to call you out. We ended on such a good note with the, with the with tying in game of Thrones and the, and the, and the Starks and the Lannisters and the wolves, and the lions and all of oh. that. But yeah, well, that's, I'll let you, I'll let you a, do the, that's a beautiful quote about the wolves. Actually, you get to wrap it up this time. Okay. Well, there's a bunch of things that I'm supposed to plug and I don't remember all of them, but there's something about a Patreon that, that Hody's messaging me about right now. So be sure to look at that. Uh, catch us on Google play stitcher, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, whatever podcast catchers there are out there. We are libertarians.com, Wall Reader, um, as well as my place, simplisticadvice.com. Uh, I've got some new stuff coming up. Uh, but most importantly, go see all of the Wall stuff and uh, look into that. Look at our past episodes and uh, get up to date on that. And stick around for, for Big Wall, which should, I think it's going to be, they're going to be doing this soon. But yeah. So that's it, Patreon. And well, what's the what's the link for the for the Patreon? I don't. Oh, I don't it's just patreon.com slash we are libertarians. There you go. Thank you. I got you to help me plug. All right. Well, this is Dale and Hody with with Wall Daily. Have a great one. Go be a family.